Hi, welcome back to the channel. You know, I got to thinking today, it's been a while since I just stood here and reviewed some good old fashioned Switch games. You ever just think about years gone and what you might have been doing like, I don't know, like six years ago? Hmm. Hey bro, there's a new game out! No way! I'm sick of my crappy old Zelda! What's it called? A Hat in Time! No freaking way! Alright! Oh, yeah! That was six years ago, and sadly, I think it's still the best thing I've ever done. <laughs> uh, yeah, I probably should finish my review of A Hat in Time since at this point it's apparently six years in the making. I also have a bunch of other Switch games I've been playing lately. A lot of them are really good, some of them are kind of <laughs> So let's talk about all those. I'm just gonna shut up. Let's do it! It's been so long since I played that alpha build of A Hat in Time that I honestly forgot this game even existed. In fact, despite how excited I was, I missed the initial release back in 2017, but Thankfully, I'm here in 2020 to play this one, which released last year and I missed it a second time. <laughs> Although, from my video in 2014 to its release, it had three years to improve on the two playable levels back then, and I, I don't know if it actually did that. You know, I wondered back then why she was wearing a mask. It's a hat in time, not a mask in time, and uh, yeah! For a cutesy platformer, the character models aren't animated with much charm or excitement. Uh, they look more like plastic, lifeless toy versions of themselves. The platforming, though, has absolutely improved, I'll say that. It has a polish to it, and it's generally fun bouncing around the levels. However, six years ago I complained about the camera controls and the combat, and neither of those have really improved. The Switch port isn't very clean, with muddy visuals, rough edges, and frame rate issues, but the throwback N64 appreciation is still here in spades. Initially, I praised this game pretty heavily, but I think back then I was much more into retro gaming and just super appreciative of these 3D platformers coming back into the spotlight. Now, with retro-inspired experiences falling out of my booty hole with games like Mario Odyssey and New Super Lucky's Tale, two super clean polished games stuffed full of charm, it's hard for me to not see straight through a Hat in Time's colorful aesthetics and instead focus on its disappointing lack of personality. There's fun to be had here, for sure. It just didn't really all come together for me. Ninjala looked like a ton of fun when it was announced recently in that Nintendo Direct, so of course, as soon as I could, I downloaded that beta test so I could get online and try out the game, and well, that looked like this. So that was fun. I have always enjoyed card-based games, whether it's in like, real life, like Magic the Gathering, where you play solely with cards, <laughs> or in video games like Baton Kados, where cards are simply a means of attacking and then there's a larger adventure around that mechanic. But admittedly, I passed on Slay the Spire when it released on eShop months ago because visually, it just didn't interest me. In fact, I remember thinking that even the title's font choice was lackluster to the point of being almost offensively bland. But the game was released physically recently and, you know, I'm bored. So I decided, what the heck? Turns out, it's actually pretty gosh darn fun, and only 20 bucks I paid. Not a bad. Aight, so here's how it works. You got four characters to choose from, each have different decks and a unique ability. The first guy is by far the most simple. His ability heals some HP at the end of each combat. I find the other characters' abilities actually make running through the game harder, but I enjoy trying them out nonetheless. Each playthrough is randomly generated and involves you picking your own path as you make calculated choices, collecting stronger cards and trinkets from each battle or mysterious event. Some run-throughs I found myself stacked with the coolest cards around and trinkets that overpowered me so much that when I got to the end boss battle I wiped him out in like two turns I was unstoppable and then other run-throughs I find myself finding just the worst abilities and cards that don't even mesh together in a deck and I get knocked out before I even finished the first chapter. But in a way, that's half the fun. Over the last couple of weeks, I keep finding myself coming back to Slay the Spire and just doing one or two more runs before I go to bed. Really not bad for $20, I'm just saying. Ah, uh, moving out is what I want to do because it's so freaking hot in this house. 
but it's also the name of the next game, moving out. Kimothy loves these kinds of games. She's a huge fan of Overcooked 2, another frantic couch co-op game developed by Team 17. And as much as I see the hilarity in multiple friends dealing with intentionally wacky controls and annoyingly designed levels during their weekend game nights, I can't help but get immediately frustrated whenever I try to join in on the fun. These kinds of games would have you think you are working together to complete a task, but really, they are designed in a way that have you more often than not unintentionally working against each other, blocking paths, somehow messing up the progress you just made, and trying not to passively aggressively yell over, yell each, over other. each other. That said, I was looking forward to playing Moving Out with Kim, because just trying to move furniture out of a house and onto a truck didn't seem as complicated or as annoying as completing an eight-step burger recipe in hot air balloons. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's just as annoying. Coordinating a team throw is a nightmare. Trying to fit everything into that truck without most of it spilling back out cost me many gray hairs. And by golly, I didn't think I'd ever compliment Overcooked, but at least with all those different recipes when they're filling the screen, it keeps you guessing and just gives you something to do during the time limit. Here, it's just a 10 minute stint of moving furniture from point A to point B. <laughs> as soon as each round starts, you know what needs to be done. It's just a matter of doing it. And look, mad respect to actual furniture removalists. You gotta be so fit, so buff to do something like that. But the job has just, it seems really boring and surprise, it is. <laughs> Maybe this game is just better left in a party setting. <laughs> Dang, Mario Maker 2 is still a thing almost a year later, and here I was thinking the internet forgets about everything after a couple of days. Didn't we wait like five years for the Final Fantasy 7 remake, and now it feels like it's come and gone in a couple of weeks? Ah, whatever, I don't care. You can create maps now. That's pretty cool. Wonder where I heard that before. But you can still only make levels. Not entire worlds. Not actual Mario games, just levels. So honestly, my theory, my expectation is that if we do, and when we do get Mario Maker 3, the big addition to that will probably be World Builder. I see you, Nintendo. Apparently you see me. <laughs> well, cool. I, good, good, cool. <laughs> good. Brutal honesty here. I loved my time with Mario Maker 2 a year ago, but I've just, I've moved on. But I'm really happy to see it's still supported. You know, I'll say, I think it would have been way cooler if Nintendo just held off a couple years and announced Mario Maker 3 with complete world building and a ton of new elements. I, I think that would have made a much bigger splash. But hey, I assume this means world building will be in Mario Maker 3 now, and I look forward to diving back into it then. Yeah, I'm looking forward, I, I'm not looking back. <laughs> Sparklight! <laughs> it's another game that I put off playing for far too long and not because I thought it looked boring, no! Anyone with ooey gooey eyeballs inside their skull can see that this game looks gorgeous. I just kept forgetting it even existed. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> but Rona backlog season is here, so I finally cracked this mm, new game open and I played it and I liked it. It's an indie game, so you can go ahead and crank that roulette wheel of pixel art, randomly generated Metroidvania 2D platform. Oh, look, it landed on roguelite. What a surprise. But <laughs> I really dig it though. It's truly a beautiful game and its gameplay progression is, <laughs> I don't want to say the word, sort of similar to Dead Cells and how it's structured. You start as a weak little nova. Ugh, look at you. Ah, disgusting. But the more you head out into the procedurally generated land and beat up baddies, the stronger and less gross you become. Collecting gems to build up your hometown, unlocking new abilities, and taking down the four big bosses around the world. It's a fun eight-ish hour adventure that for its price packs a decent punch. <laughs> Once you finish it though, there's no real reason to go back through it, but I don't care about that. I got my money's worth. I'm happy. And this is what it's like to go even further beyond and play My Hero Academia, whatever. I don't know. My Hero wants Justice 2. That's the one.
Ah, the sequel is just as good as the original, if not better. If you missed my review of the, that, it's, uh, I don't care. Well, this sequel improves on just about everything. Doubling the roster size over the original game, we now have over 40 playable heroes. The first game covered the first two seasons, and this one will take you through the recent two seasons, so spoiler alert, do yourself a favor and watch the anime first. If you haven't seen it, you just should. It's pretty good. The gameplay is even smoother with new moves and attacks for the characters, visually it's brighter, more vibrant and detailed, the game runs fast and furious with no frame rate issues and much faster load times than before and as I said about the last one, it's just a joy to play. I'm still pumping dudes heads with Tenya and having a great time. So whether you want to play through the story of the anime and actually take part in some of the cool battles or just pit some of your favorite heroes and villains together in free play, this game is a good. I am currently playing through Shin Sekai Into the Depths. I don't want to pronounce that wrong, but I haven't played it enough to actually talk about it. I was thinking of trying to finish it before this video. You don't care, but it hasn't got a physical release. It's eShop only. Why does that matter? Well, it doesn't really, but I do have a series where I talk about eShop games and I'm just gonna put this on the next one. But I still wanted to say, just to support it now, it's really good. It's really good. So if you wanna take my word on that, go ahead and buy it. If you wanna wait for me to actually review it, well, just subscribe so you don't miss the video. You dumb bum. <laughs> All right, cool. You bunch of butternutters. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching this video. It does actually mean a lot to me you got to this point, but it is, it's over now. It's over. Get lost. Get out of here. What are you doing with your life that you're still, there is no content left. What is happening right now? It isn't content. I'm gonna head out. You can stay. But I, I got stuff to do, man. I don't. Freaking weirdo.